Welcome to Chalk Across America. I'm Doug Miles, and we're here in beautiful Sarasota, Florida. Joining us now on our Book Talk segment, great to welcome, a woman who's written a very interesting book, kind of historical novel about uh, maybe a little known, I guess it is kind of a little known uh, thing that happened during World War II. It's inspired by uh, real female pilots during that time. It's called The Flight Girls. And we're joined today by Noelle Salazar. She's based out in uh, Washington State, and she joined us by telephone today. And uh, Noelle, good to talk with you. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, good to have a chance to uh, chat with you for, for a couple of minutes uh, about the book. And uh, I have to say, uh, I I had not heard too much about uh, the book kind of uh, centers around uh, your main character but she's part of the woman air force service pilots program world war ii where uh, women were actually pilots during the war i guess uh, i never heard of that and uh, i'm sure a lot of the readers haven't either so interesting uh, premise to start the book yeah I've, i find that not many people have heard of these women and um I'm assuming it's because when the program ended, they sealed the file on it for uh, 35 years, so it did not make it into our history books, unfortunately. I know my mom, uh, she was uh, you know, at, at the age at that time where she wanted to go into uh, uh, serve, then she was a nurse, and uh, she actually applied for the Air Corps as a nurse, but, uh, but I guess she might have even become a pilot at that time, who knows, but whatever the reason, but uh, I've heard of women in the Air Force, at the, or the Air Corps, and, and women serving in World War II, but not as pilots, so uh, how many served, do you know offhand? There were 1,074 women that were part of the WASP program, uh, 38 that died in service. Wow, yeah, that's, that's quite uh, quite amazing. Well, anyway, the, that's the, the kind of the, the uh, backdrop of the book, but it is a novel. You kind of reimagine uh, uh, what could have happened then. And uh, first of all, how, how did you get interested in that particular uh, period uh, of, uh, of history? Uh, I've always loved World War II history. I, I love the stories. My grandfather fought in the war. Uh, my grandmother was a military wife toting four kids cross-country as they changed bases. Um, so I, I imagine that's where my uh, fascination with it comes from. Um, but then my aunt was studying to be a docent at the Museum of Flight in Seattle for their new WASP exhibit. Okay. She happened to have this stack of books one day when I was over there, and I started flipping through them, and, and I was intrigued. And uh, one particular anecdote just sort of planted itself in, in my brain, and I was off and running with the story. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great, uh, like you said, a lot of drama, obviously, uh, you know, World War II and all that, and then the period of the early 1940s uh, in America and, and Europe. And, well, I won't give away too much. I never like to do it when I talk about novels, but your main character is uh, Audrey Coltrane. I know she goes to Hawaii, and uh, and I guess she's going to uh, help instruct, right, to, or be part of the aviators there, right, or, or learn how to be a pilot there. Is that, is that how it starts? Yeah, so um, that's actually how I, or the little anecdote I found that inspired the story was um, I found this photo of an entry in a logbook by Cornelia Ford. She was a civilian pilot that was training airmen recruits on Oahu um, in 1941, and she was the first American pilot to see the Japanese fleet fly in. Um, she was in the air training, and and so that's that was the anecdote that um, that started this entire thing. And um, so it was exciting to kind of just start there in Hawaii and, and kind of watch this whole thing unfold and um, take this character through the war. Now, it doesn't take place, well, I guess it does, just reading the notes uh, and the book, uh, October of 41, so it's a couple of months before Pearl Harbor. So she's there during that time. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll let you take it from there, yeah, kind so of give us starts, an option. Yeah, so it starts in Hawaii, and, and Audrey is just a young woman whose goal in life is to fly. That's all she wants to do um, in any way, shape, or form she can. She does have an end goal, and um, but then the attack on Pearl Harbor happens, and it sort of changes the course of her life, and this WASP program is started uh, two years later, and so she... Um, she goes home first, which she's from Dallas, Texas, and um, the program actually was in Sweetwater, Texas. So she travels there, and she becomes um, part of this group of women who bravely serve their country without the um, without military benefits. They were civilian pilots always, um, 
And she it's just sort of her story through the, these years of the war and, and how she stays true to herself, but also um, the small evolution of, um, of her as a woman. They, they, I didn't realize they were not uh, actually given a rank then. They were still civilians, even though they served in the Air Corps. Yeah, that was one of the more shocking details I yeah. uh, found out about them. They um, they were trained to uh, fly the quote unquote army way. They had to um, basically go through a boot camp, and and they had ground school, and um, but they were never given benefits, even though they were flying the military's planes um, and serving their country. Uh, so if they were injured or they died, it was up to their family or um, the other women to raise funds to get their bodies home. Mm. I know there's a, uh, a romantic interest in the book, right? A, a lieutenant? Uh, how does he fit there in is. the story? <laughs> if you can tell part of that. <laughs> well, he um, he didn't originally appear in the, the first version of this story. It was more of a just a female kind of friendship story. Mm -hmm. And then in one of the versions, he just sort of appeared. I, I write in a sort of an organic fashion where characters sort of just appear out of nowhere sometimes. <laughs> and and then I realized that um, part of life is love. And I feel like, especially during war and um, periods where, it, you know, you're, you're questioning your mortality, you, you cling to things like love. And um, so I thought he, was, he ended up being sort of important um, and part of Audrey's um, evolution as a person because she really was kind of one-minded and stubborn and and I think it, um, war sort of softened her and opened her eyes to um, that there could be more because um, he's also um, a kind of like-minded individual and where he has a goal and he's not looking to settle down um, so I think they complement each other because neither is trying to take anything from the other and they only support the other person right now, obviously, uh, it takes place during uh, a war time, and, and these missions that these women went on. You see a lot of the you know war movies where the you know, the, the men fighter pilots, you know, all the camaraderie and the stories there. I guess you have to kind of reimagine what what the women were like talking to each other, right? Or the camaraderie there is that is that a little different? Was that interesting for you to kind of figure out how that might have been? Well, it's interesting because um, you know I was, I was thinking about how. You know, why did I write this story? How did I even, you know, come to need to tell the story? And then I realized I, I've been living a, sort of a version of the story in my own life um, throughout the years. I've always sort of joined in with um, groups of women. I went to Navy boot camp, right. um, so I have experienced being in a barracks with a bunch of women sharing a bathroom and all the chaos that comes with that, but also all the friendships. And it really was one of the best times of my life, and I look back on it fondly, even though I, I didn't actually um, make it past boot camp. I had a prior injury, and I, they had to release me. They um, Since it wasn't incurred there, <laughs> they didn't want to do surgery on me. So, um, so yeah, I feel like I, in my own life, I had ended up sort of doing my own research without even knowing it. Um, so it was fun to write those, those parts and, and those relationships with the other women. I should have said, you're a Navy recruit. You also uh, were a cheerleader at one time for the, one of the NFL team. So you've, you've, you've been in situations with a bunch of other women in the same place. So you, you, you know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I really did extensive research without knowing. But it's a different dynamic, obviously. A bunch of guys together and a bunch of women together. I'm sure there's differences that uh, the way they handled pressure oh, and all sure. that kind of thing. So that, that's interesting, I think, for the reader. They'll, they'll get that from this book as well. And uh, well, it's a great uh, great premise, like I said, for a book taking place during World War II. And again, the uh, unknown WASP program, Women Air Force uh, Service Pilot. Did, did you get a chance to talk to anybody that actually uh, was a pilot and any still around that you were able to talk to? Yeah, there's not many left. I did get to speak to one by phone before I started um, my edits, um, and that was lovely. She gave me a great um, rundown of what it, what the daily was like, because that's something I couldn't really find in books. Um, and then this past May, they do an annual WASP homecoming reunion, and, and two of the women um, were able to make that journey. And okay. they're in their late 90s, and, and these two particular women were the babies of the group. And, and they are still full of stories and feisty and lovely, and it was a really um, overwhelming experience. Oh, great. Yeah, I'm sure that was... Uh 
great for you to, to talk to them. Well, the name of the book is called The Flight Girls, and we've been talking with uh, Noelle Salazar today. And uh, Noelle, get out your website if you would. People can get more information about the book. I would love to. My website is noellesalazar.com. Great. Noelle, pleasure talking to you, and uh, hopefully we can do it again. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us today on Talk Across America. Please visit our website at DougMilesMedia.com for more great interviews and content. And if you're interested in any of the books we talk about on the program, please click the Amazon link on our website. It helps support the podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll see you again real soon here from beautiful Sarasota, Florida. I'm Stan Brock. 30 years ago, I formed Remote Area Medical to help people overseas. But then we found generations of families in America isolated by poverty from the health care they need. Together, we can take dental, vision, and medical help to a million adults and their kids right here at home in the United States of America.